Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now guys, in today's uh, video vlog for bringing the plants in forever into it, I have got here a couple of trays and I'm going to be filling up these trays with a selection of plants that are not cold hardy, they're going to need to be overwintered. And um, I have to go to college this afternoon so I may not have time to finish all this so I'll probably do, do this in one part and then I'll carry on doing the rest of the plants to bring in tomorrow. So um, we're going to start off with, I'm going to choose some of the ones that are not cold hardy, like some of the Preschiopsis and all the other ones there, and the Preschias, and um, the Stapelias and a selection of a few different ones. So um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be choosing to put onto the tray to overwinter, and then give you the reasons why I've chosen them. I'm going to go through and pick out randomly what I know is definitely going to need to be overwintered. Now, these are Hans's. This is his beautiful Clerodendium Thombosii, still in flower. And because Hans has got it all tied up with wire um, string going all the way up in the polytunnel, I'm going to leave that till he's back to um, untie because I would not uh, want to damage this. So I'm going to leave that for him. That's not a problem. And also this beautiful... Um, not quite sure the name it's it's a type of nettle it's absolutely beautiful look at that guys and it's in flower and that's obviously both of these are not cold hardy so um again this is Hans's I'm going to let Hans take this into his room when he comes back so that's better off kept there <laughs> but it's beautiful and um here now what we've got here we've got some what we call Preschia and believe it or not guys these Preschia this is Preschia Godsefiana um, which has beautiful golden coloured um, leaves and on the underside a lovely sort of reddy colour. This may, may look like just a normal plant or just a normal succulent at that. But believe it or not guys, this is actually a cactus. Um, and the reason why it has um, areoles, now okay you could say well it just looks like normal spines and thorns to me. No it actually has areoles and an areole, just to make it a bit clear, you think what the hell is she talking about, is one of these little felted um, tiny little felts here where the spine comes out of and sometimes cacti will have areoles but have no spines as in the case of Lophophora like this but they have to have an areole which is that and these have areoles with the, um, the spines coming out of so it is definitely cacti but often they're, they're a lot of people don't realize they are but they they can sort of keep a cold temperatures to a degree but ideally they don't like to be kept any lower than about um, eight celsius they're more tropical type of cacti. So as I say, this polytunnel, we have a heater there that kicks on if it happens to drop below five Celsius. And five Celsius is around about 40 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's, we have a mixture of different types of cacti or different types of uh, minimum winter temperatures. But um, we have some that can take two degrees, some that can even take minus two if they're dry and some that can take seven or eight. So we have it around the five minimum. So that covers the majority of plants in here. And um, also because during the day, even in a cold day in here, that when the sun is out, the polytunnel can be very, very warm. So we only need the heating on sometimes on the odd night when it does drop quite cold. Here in uh, Northern Ireland, it's mild climate, unless we have a winter like last year anyway. But um, roughly on average, it's kept around sort of around the seven Celsius, around the sort of 45 degree Fahrenheit mark but um, it never drops below five so they're all completely frost free in here but there are some like the prescas that need a minimum of eight degree and some also the euphorbias like this one here euphorbia sudanica um, it's a lovely leafy euphorbia has to have a minimum of 10 celsius so obviously to heat this polytunnel at 10 celsius would cost us an absolute arm and a leg in electricity which we just can't afford and then obviously keeping it at that temperature then would also stop a lot of the desert type of cacti that need cool temperatures it would prevent a lot of them from overwintering properly as well so um, it's just finding a balance so we decide to bring the ones that need a higher temperature inside the house just to overwinter and then put them back out in the spring and as I say we've got some more prescas here and um, this one here is absolutely beautiful this was one that we took as a cutting from the mother plants here and it's one we we're actually growing for Josh for the Grow It For Josh project and a lot of you on YouTube will fam be familiar with the Grow It For Josh project it's what Rachel at Garnet Duenza um, decided to do to, to honour her late son um, the wonderful Josh and um, people from all over the world are growing a plant for Josh so it's really wonderful and I have to say this is thriving so well and if you're not familiar with the Grow for Josh project 
please do I'll put a link up above to a video on um, Rachel who who who's gardening at Dwenza, who did this um, lovely Grow for Joss project in, in memory of her late son. And do check it out. And if you want to grow a plant for Josh, please do. It's a wonderful thing to do. A lovely way to, to honour Josh as well, really is. And um, that's absolutely thriving. So anyway, enough, I could waffle about the plants all day. <laughs> but um, this is just to, to tell you why I'm bringing them in, because they're not cold hardy. So starting off, first of all, with the prescias. And... Um, just going to turn the camera off now because I've only got one hand, one pair of hands, and I'm going to show you um, whoops, <laughs> all the prescias together on the tray. And that's all the prescias all on the tray from the polytunnel now. And um, I'll just show you we have four different types of prescia. As I say, um, <clears throat> this is prescia godsefiana that has the lovely leaf um, with the lovely red uh, sort of coloration to it and a lovely sort of golden edging and it does need a good water which is why it's looking a bit limp now we don't water these during the winter that is purely optional it's more of a tropical type of cacti that um, if you do water it through the winter no harm it's just going to carry on growing and forming leaves but they do prefer like all cacti to have a bit of a rest so we stop watering it and it's normal for the leaves to actually go very limp looking and sometimes even fall off but as soon as you start watering it again in the spring it will shoot up again all in the new leaf so no harm there so it's something we're probably going to leave the, the watering down so it has its normal rest and here we have three other types of prescures now this one here is looking a bit sad as well. It's normal for the leaves to go yellow towards the end of its um, end of the growing period. They'll probably just fall off. As I say, it's been kept dry now here in the polytunnel. So it's normal for it to drop its leaves. Now, it's up to us whether we want to give a bit of water or not for the, for the winter. But um, I'm going to keep this dry now. Now, this is Prescia grandifolia. And which means grand foliage obviously and um, again similar in appearance by um, as the other one with its leaves but a um, bit more of a golden coloured more golden coloured leaves there the, the leaves are say on their way out but it is more of a lighter golden colour anyway and a bit of a thicker stem so that's that one and then we also have this one here this is Prescia Z-Z-Z-Neri um, Z-Z-E-H-N-T Neri also called um, Cura Bentia which is another name for this this um, Prescia and look at that it's gorgeous isn't it and sometimes it's wrongly put under the category of an Ostracylindra puncture because of its appearance is very much almost like the polka dot um, appearance that you see with um, a punctures but it's not this is purely um, Prescia again leafy again very gorgeous that's another one we have and um, last but not least this one here is Prescia Prescia Diaz Roma, Romarana Romarana absolutely gorgeous there so that's another beautiful one again again different um different variety again this has more thinner pointy leaves um than the other one as well very gorgeous it's starting to branch out as well this still has its leaves but it's starting to drop its leaf now it's being kept dry ready for the ready for the winter so that's it. a little bit of information about about them in case you ever just think they're quite unusual for cacti because they really are not like typical cacti that you see like these, for example, the typical cacti that you normally see, <laughs> they're certainly different and I really love them, I have to say. And as I say, minimum winter temperature these like to be overwintered at is 10 Celsius. Um, 8 Celsius at the absolute bare minimum, which would be about 40, sort of 6 degree um, Fahrenheit. Um, but ideally no lower than 10 in an ideal situation to, to look its best. So these are going to be overwintered upstairs in the, in the, the plant room. Now that's all the prescias inside the house and now I'm going to do, do the Pereski opposis. <laughs> now these are similar to prescia. Again, I'm just going to show you this. These are the leafy cacti and these often obviously get mixed up again as just being just succulents because of the, the leaves they have on them. But there are again cacti, as I say, they have the areoles. So this is Pereski opposis, which is similar to Pereski in, in the leafiness. But this um, is a very tall growing, um, amazing cactus. We have quite a lot of them and um, they're great for grafting. Now, me and Hansi don't graft our plants. Personally, I'm not really a fan of it. I don't judge other people who do. There's some amazing art um, cacti um, that people do with grafting. It's just something I've never really been into. And um, we just got these prescias because we prescia opposite, I should say, because I think they're amazing. And these were all cuttings that we rooted very successfully in water early on in the year. 
we got these cuttings from I think it was Cacteen Haag um, in Germany and they rooted like lightning in water so that's a uh, really really did water so it did really root so well in water and these aren't cold hardy either now there's a few people who do we do know who grows grow these who keep these in their greenhouses over winter at sort of five and four celsius and they say they've had no problems but personally this is our first year with Presciopsis and we want to be safe on the safe side. From what I've heard, they're not cold hardy. They do need a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, because they're sort of one that does sort of also need a bit of water during the winter months, um, no harm will go if you don't water them, but they do prefer a bit of water. Then kept in cold temperatures at 5C or just a bit above might be a bit too much for these. So we want to be safe on the safe side. So that's the first one. We have about 10 of these all jotted around here as you can see so it's just a case of putting all these on the tray and then we're going to be putting these into the grow room under the grow lights and when i say grow lights we don't want them to necessarily grow we're just going to be overwintering our cacti and you can overwinter cacti in um, not sunny spots as long as you have a bright i mean the people even overwinter them in cellars and things like that and total darkness i personally wouldn't recommend that but we do use the grow lights just to help them give a bit of additional light on cloudy days for a bit of chlorophyll and also one of our grow rooms is north facing so by having the the um, led lights on it gives the it supplements a bit of supplementary lighting as if the sun is coming through the window which is good for them and it's cost effective it just gives them a bit of boost in the winter and i'm going to go around the polytunnel now pick them all up we've got a few more all over the place sort of jotted about some more prescues not quite sure they are there's some at the back wall there and then i'm going to show you what they want what they're like when we've got them all together on the tray now there you go guys, that's all the Presciopsis, um, all on a tray, ready to be brought in. As I say, they need a minimum temperature of about 10 Celsius, 50 degree Fahrenheit. So not cold hardy enough for the polytunnel. And um, we've got the Presciers and the Presciopsis. And as I say, the difference between the two, the Presciers obviously has the big leaves and the Presciopsis is these long tall columns and uh, quite beautiful, sort of weird little plants, but sort of wacky, I love them. So um, they're gonna be going. And now um, the next, there's so quite a lot I need to go through here to um, sort out that need to be overwintered and I have to go to college this afternoon so I haven't got that much time so I'm probably going to do the these ones in here next to show you the um Epiphyllums, we've got a few epiphyllums that should be okay. These are mainly your sort of cuttings and things like that. But um, we'll keep an eye on them. They should be okay as long as they're kept mostly dry. And um, some young young seedlings here, I think will be okay. These are puncher seedlings, so they'll be okay out here for a bit longer anyway, I think. Um, see how they go. They're still in their first year, so may bring them into the house. These are Mammillaria seedlings. They'll be okay out here. Now, what's not coldy here is we have a Ripsalis. Um, now, this one is a, I'm not actually sure what type it is, but it's it's like a big crisparta one. And, but this has the lovely big wide uh, leaves with a lovely purple coloration. But this, again, will be a minimum, minimum of about 8 Celsius, um, which is about probably about 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, some people say this is safe to overwinter overwinter at 5c but personally this is my first year with this plant this i mean we have a lot of bipsalis that we do overwinter at low temperatures and some we bring in some are, some are prone to leaf spotting and things if they're kept too low so we're going to be on the safe side bring this one in but we have got here we've got some heliocereus um, we've also got some um yeah some more other type of heliocereus here we have a pinocereus and we also have harisema um and we also have a few, um, another type of ripsal is a new one we've got also. We're going to take that one in. And this one also, which is a another type of um, sort of a ripsal is type. Again, I think that is cold hardy, but my first year with it, I'm going to bring it in. This is also another Selenicereus here. Um, again, not cold. Selenicereus, Pinocereus um, are all um, more tropical type of epiphytic type of plants. So cacti. So they do need a minimum of about... 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit so if you have um selenicereus or pinocereus or hylocereus um all of them types they do need a winter minimum of 50 degree fahrenheit which is 10 degrees celsius any lower than that then they will more likely um, come down to rot or just go to mush um, so do bear that in mind guys now these are our selenicereus um 
Silicglandiflorus, and we have a few. These are all cuttings. This was Hansi's big um, Silenicerus grandiflorus that he had in his apartment when he lived in Sweden, and he had to cut it, take, cut it down into lots of cuttings because it was too large to move. It was massive. It was all growing all along his apartment. It was beautiful, but um, obviously he had to cut it, and we treated it all as cuttings, and they've all rooted, and I have to say, very happy. Haven't flowered yet, but they're probably putting their energy to the root system and what we may do is possibly probably next spring now is put all of these cuttings into one big hanging basket and just let it grow as a very large hanging basket as you see it's trying to do that now that's where it's actually rooted in a neighboring pot <laughs> and um, it is a trailing plant it does like to sort of grow along and you often see them in botanic gardens where it's sort of growing along the roof going all along which would be lovely but because we have to bring it in because it's not cold uh, hardy it's no point in trying to get it to sort of take a lovely um, display all in the polyton and we best to take it in so probably one big hanging basket might be lovely to do maybe in the spring now but as I say this is going to be overwintered so a lot on this table is going to be overwintered here except for the Apuntia seedlings now this one also is another Selenicerius again it looks more like a traditional type of cactus but it is a Selenicerius again not cold hardy so what I'm going to be doing here is taking the Selenicerius off and um, also the Pinoceriuses and any of the other sort of epiphytic type, the Helioceriuses as well, that are not going to be that cold hardy. And also this here, this is a succulent and this is a Cissus and it's absolutely gorgeous. It has little leaves. Look at that. Now this is a Cissus quadriangularis. I'll put it, put it going across the screen. Cissus quadrangularis. <laughs> it is amazing plant. Um, very beautiful. But this again is not cold hardy at all. This needs a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius. 50 degree Fahrenheit so this is also going to be coming in so I'm going to be dealing with this table now and I hope by explaining a little bit about each of the minimum winter temperatures um, you'll hopefully learn if you have these plants yourself because a lot of people will grow them in the gardens and stuff and if you're living in a warm country lucky you but unfortunately Ireland is um, very damp <laughs> and it's the damp um, and the cold temperatures that are more of a problem here rather than the cold because our climate is sort of mild in general for winter but I'm um, going to sort these out and I'm going to show you um, when they're all on the tray. So that's all the ones here that I've sorted out to bring in here now and as I say there's some uh, Selenicerius here and this one here is a Harrisi Harrisia, again not cold hardy and this one here is a Cissus, um, isn't it amazing guys? And I love the little leaves on it, um, this again minimum temperature of 50 degree Fahrenheit so that's coming in and we have um, Pinocerius and we have Heliocerius and a Heliocerius is a cross between Selenicerius and also um, Hylocerius as you can see sort of resembles it a little bit in its appearance there. So these are going to be going up now into my office, the grow room one. And then I'm also going to be bringing in this lovely Tradescantia here. This is gorgeous. And um, this is the big mother plant. These are the ones here we grew from seed. And we've given loads away as gifts to people as well. And um, these three here probably give away to the girls at college. And um, this beauty here is um, going to be overwintered indoors. This was Hansi's, Hansi's beautiful baby that he brought over from uh, Sweden also that he grew from seed himself too. So that's beautiful. So that's going to be coming up. And then also I'm going to be bringing up these um, Selenicerius grandifloruses and I might as well bring them up as they are on the tray. And then I'm going to show you then when they're all upstairs. Now that's all the plants brought in from the... Um, from the polytunnel. Well, some of them, obviously. We've got some more to do. I'm going to carry on with tomorrow. But um, these are obviously the, we've got the Prescias here, the Prescioposis, and some of the Selenicerioses, and a selection of other ones as well. And um, as I say, I'm going to bring the, the other ones in from the polytunnel tomorrow, and then I'm going to be rearranging all the plant table here and the stand and dividing them between plant room one and plant, plant room two. And... Uh, that's it guys so um as you can see there's the black trays there so stay tuned and um tune in for tomorrow's video we're going to be bringing some more in from the polytunnel as well and guys if you want to know a bit more about uh, caring for cacti and succulents if you're new to growing these amazing plants please do check out my website it's uh, desertplantsofavalon.com and links to my website will also be down below in the about section of this video do go over and have a look and um have a read up on there guys <laughs> so guys thanks so much for watching
and I want to send you loads of love. Heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power. As always, my crossy emerald isle. And until the next video, bye.